Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. He said we had to run. The reason you survived is because you're a very uncommon girl. You're not alone. Not anymore. Do you know what mutants are? Would anyone like to share their first time? Rain? I was 13. I thought it was a dream. I just lost control. Sam? I started panicking. People got hurt. Roberto? My girlfriend had burned her. Deliana? I killed 18 men. One by one. This isn't a hospital. It's a cage. It's important we find out your power so we can help you get better. Something I do a poor job of communicating and I'm working to improve on is establishing that in addition to obviously discussing all things horror, Daily Horror Habit also covers horror adjacent works. Films are series that may fall outside the horror genre, but still evoke horror elements to tell their stories in a creatively engaging way. Previous episodes of the podcast, such as episode 69, highlighted Matt Reeves' dark serial killer-esque 7 approach to his upcoming Batman reboot, as well as episode 116 that highlighted how The Mandalorian's second season kicked things off with a full-blown creature feature premiere. And while neither of these films are horror, they heavily bar horror elements and horror subgenres to tell new types of stories in previously established universes. Which brings us to today's review of The New Mutants, the 13th and final film in the long-running X-Men series. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, how in the hell does a superhero movie, and an infamous one at that, fit under the umbrella of horror adjacent? Well, you might be surprised to learn that this is the most horror-centric superhero film ever made. And while it fits my criteria to review it for Daily Horror Habit, falling under that umbrella doesn't necessarily mean it's entirely successful in what it sets out to achieve. The New Mutants, which is currently streaming on Video On Demand services, follows a group of mutant teens confined to a mysterious hospital. Though the longer their seemingly indefinite stay becomes, they begin to question their doctor's motives, and the horrors of their collective pasts begins to manifest in frightening ways. Before diving into the film itself, I have to give a brief crash course on why it's an achievement in and of itself that director and co-writer Josh Boone's film ever saw the light of day. After completing his 2014 film The Fault in Our Stars, Josh Boone and co-writer Gannett Lee signed on in 2015 to the New Mutants Project. As fans of the comic series of the same name by X-Men legend Chris Claremont, Boone and Lee wanted to approach the superhero project with a strong horror vibe to help give the film its own unique voice to previous X-Men films. Now you can see why this film meets my criteria to cover for Daily Horror Habit. Though, as is usually the case, the original direction of a film often changes once studio fuckery begins. Fox Studios was obviously not especially keen on a full-blown horror superhero film, given their perception of it only appealing to a niche audience. As if there's no overlap between superhero and horror fans, but I digress. The creative team and studio eventually compromised on a version devoid of excessive blood and scares for a more young adult-focused film. This is where comparisons to the New Mutants begin similar to Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors comes into play, a comparison that's apt to a degree, but more on that later. Principal photography for the film took place in Boston, Massachusetts from July to September of 2017, primarily at Medfield State Hospital, notable for having several scenes from Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island filmed there as well. In an interview with trackingboard.com, Boone described this time as stressful as he felt a bit neutered during the process due to having to tone down the film from his original full horror ideas. I'd imagine any director would feel this way to be honest, but with horror films especially, it's noticeable when scares have to be dumbed down to appease a rating. In addition, according to vulture.com, the script was also chopped and screwed to hell, having contributions from numerous other writers along with the six-person Fox writer's room that generated ideas, as well as tearing apart the script and putting it back together. Which is absolutely apparent during the film, as there's a distinct lack of continuity and flow between scenes, which results in some feeling like filler or not fitting entirely with the narrative. 
Fox apparently wasn't overly thrilled with the first cut of the film either, and planned extensive reshoots, which would never end up happening, mostly due to unforeseen delays. By this point, 20th Century Fox was still aiming for a 2018 release for the film, but even once principal photography wrapped, another wrench was thrown into the New Mutants works. Disney Studios began the process of acquiring production company 20th Century Fox. This completely halted any plans to conduct reshoots, which the creative team were struggling to decide what to even reshoot and how to manage the logistics of doing so. Given the entire cast's busy schedule, post-principal photography, as well as Boone himself, who was already tackling his television adaptation of Stephen King's novel The Stand for CBS, the reality of reshoots was quickly turning into a fantasy. Once Disney had completed this acquisition, almost a year later, they asked Boone to return to finish the film, but he had to bring a new film editor, Andrew Buckland, on, as they had lost their previous two editors who were committed to The Stand already. With the film finally completed and ready for a 2020 March release date after years of fans and critics making light of the film being stuck in development hell, it was finally slated to release on March 12, 2020. Until it wasn't. Disney had to remove the film from its release schedule due to the COVID-19 pandemic gutting theaters, essentially eliminating any real box office potential. Though, despite the pandemic still ravaging the United States along with other parts of the world, The New Mutants would finally see a theatrical release on August 28, 2020. I don't have the box office numbers, but as most films released during the pandemic, they aren't good. If you were smart to not brave a theater during a pandemic that's killed hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, The New Mutants was recently made available on VOD and DVD and Blu-ray on November 17, 2020. That long-winded as hell history lesson did serve a purpose other than padding time, I promise. It was important to show how volatile of a production The New Mutants was subjugated to, how delays in studio fuckery in more ways than one altered the original horror vision that Boone and Lee had for their unique rendition of the X-Men. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leaving a review on iTunes. And thank you for your continued support, which drives the show's success. And now, without further ado, let's get back to today's horrifying episode. This turbulent production explains why The New Mutants feels like an overly messy and jankily constructed movie for much of its runtime. So, why bother reviewing a film that sounds like it's mostly underwhelming? Well, because the film largely achieves what Boone and Lee originally set out to do, despite some pretty glaring shortcomings. The film opens with Danny Moonstar, played by Blue Hunt, being suddenly woken by her father as her small village is ripped apart by a mysterious entity. As she is pursued into the forest by the beast, her father is suddenly killed, and Danny is knocked unconscious. Awaking in a hospital, she's greeted by Dr. Reyes, played by Alice Braga, a doctor who informs her that she's a mutant with special gifts. From the jump, this intro feels rushed. We aren't given much incentive to become invested in Danny, other than she is literally the protagonist of the film. Danny isn't the only patient at the facility which is attempting to help these young mutants manage and control their powers before being released into the world. Though as a force field surrounds the hospital, it begins to become clear the facility is more of a cage. The audience is introduced to the other mutants. Ronhi Sinclair, played by Maisie Williams, Ilion Rasputin, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, Sam Gunthry, played by Charlie Heaton, and Robert DaCosta, played by Henry Zaga. Each has their own unique abilities, but more interestingly, a unique traumatic baggage directly linked to the film's scares. As I'm not familiar with the source material, I can't comment on how faithful characters and their baggage is to the comics, but for the film, I think Boone and Lee do a decent enough job of establishing scares and backgrounds for characters. The longer Danny's stay extends, each of the mutants begins experiencing strange hallucinations and nightmares that exploit each of their tragic pasts. Sinclair laments her being targeted by a priest at her parochial school who branded her with a W upon discovering she possessed powers. This results in her being visited in the showers by a walking nightmare of the priest who branded her, except his face has been shredded by Sinclair, who grows claws when she transforms into a beast of sorts. Ileana recalls a childhood memory of a group of men with smiling face masks surrounding her as she slept as a child. These save smiley men appearing and stalking her throughout the hospital. Sam is haunted by a mining accident he caused that killed his father and co-workers as he hallucinates the miners hacking him to pieces with their axes. And Roberto is stalked by his girlfriend's charred corpse who he accidentally killed by setting her ablaze when they were having sex. This is by far the film's most interesting aspect, as it crafts smart nightmares around characters' backgrounds in some genuinely disturbing ways. Seeing each character grapple with their past and the literal manifestation of these nightmares is great. 
Pair this with some short-lived but memorable nightmare creature design, and the New Mutants earns its The Dream Warriors comparison, even if it does feel like a light version made with a young adult audience in mind. And that's about where my enjoyment of the film ends, as these handful of satisfying horror moments are interwoven into a blatantly messily constructed film. Scenes are so mishmashed together that it essentially kills any sense of continuity or pacing. There's no real tone as these horror moments are often stepped on by cringe teen humor or some truly awful dialogue moments. The chopped and screwed feeling of scenes is distracting throughout, with some moments falling completely flat or failing to mesh with the scene that follows it. This results in us never getting a great sense of who any of these particular characters are, other than their past trauma. The narrative itself and villain are also paper thin with little complexity or surprises in store for the audience. Despite just how messy the film's construction is, I never found this to be an absolute train wreck that some are claiming it to be. Its effects work is reflective of its estimated 60 to 80 million dollar budget, and seeing these characters' trauma come to life does provide a handful of entertaining moments that are frequent enough that each underwhelming bit of character interaction was elevated by a horror moment that followed it. The film also features a larger than life finale that I found to be a chaotic bit of spirit fighting fun. In spite of the film's obvious faults, Boone and Lee absolutely delivered on making this a memorable, horror light take on the X-Men. And while my enjoyment of the previous X-Men films is of course subjective, this was the most fun I had with an X-Men film in years maybe? Not counting Logan of course. I have to applaud the creative team's ability to inject a horror focus into a mainstream superhero movie. Something that I would hope trends, but is clearly unlikely due to the infamous production and box office and sales figure of The New Mutants. The New Mutants is a film that I wouldn't necessarily tell anyone to go out of their way to rent, especially at its $6 rental price currently. But, if you're a horror fan looking for something different in a superhero film, or vice versa, it's worth checking out when the VOD price drops a bit, or for when it inevitably comes to a streaming platform. Moving into December, and in 2021, I'm going to place more of an emphasis on reviewing more movies and series that are horror adjacent, to highlight stories borrowing from horror, to tell unique takes on classic genre frameworks. And that'll do it for this horror adjacent episode of Daily Horror Habit, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another daily dose of horror movie reviews. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.